I have purchased so many games within the last year since I started to get back into gaming and realized that I was trying too hard to keep up with the hype and the releases that I never actually finished any of the games that I purchased, except for a few. Kia ora. Welcome back to Cozy Bichota. My name is Natalia for anyone that's new here. I wanted to do an end of the month roundup of the games that I played. So what I decided to do was each month dedicate some time to certain games and try to complete them. And if I don't complete them, they're going to have to trickle into the next month, which I will get to soon in this video. And also a gaming journal where I draw a character or a scene from the game and give a basic summary of the game and what I really liked about it and how much time it took me to complete it. That way when I get to look back on the gaming journal, I get to appreciate the game a little bit more and see how much time I dedicated into it just to have a full holistic approach to gaming. Now, I didn't get my Nintendo Switch until the end of 2022, like literally the end of 2022, since my birthday is basically at the end of the year, and I decided to treat myself with the Animal Crossing Switch version. So 2023 for me was packed with reuniting and rekindling that love of gaming from when I grew up playing with the GameCube, the Nintendo 64, the Wii, the DS, name it, and I probably had some sort of console that you can relate to and brings you so much nostalgia. So this past year, I got reunited again with Animal Crossing. I tried out Stardew Valley because I wanted to know the hype around it and a lot of other really classic games. And I just kept buying and buying and buying. So I wanted to make sure that I actually got to play them this year. It doesn't mean that I won't be buying new games because I will want to. I've already bought Turnip Boy, Rob's a bank because I did beat Turnip Boy Commits Tax Evasion last year and the quirkiness of it was so much fun. And I do plan on getting the Octopia DLC for Eastward because it's farming and it's Eastward. Um, so let's just talk about the games that I played this month. Now there are games that I'm constantly going to be playing because they're just comfort games for me. So I did play some Animal Crossing and some Stardew Valley because those are just classics for me as well as Ooblets. But this month I wanted to make a focus on completing one big game and one small game. The small game that I completed this month was Smushy Come Home, and let me tell you, I loved every second of that game. It reintroduced platforming in a very easy and interactive way for me. It made me really appreciate the scenery that was presented to me. I loved the quirky comments and conversations amongst each of the characters. I loved the little encyclopedia almanac style book that you get where you get to learn about the different mushroom and fungi in the area. I love the storyline of returning back home after being displaced by an event that this poor mushroom had no control over and just every scene and every person and every critter that you got to interact with was absolutely enthralling. This game for me really hit home. The visuals are stunning. Uh, the art style is absolutely gorgeous. You can tell that the developer really poured his entire being into this game. I loved the music. It was so relaxing and this was one of those games that was challenging enough that I was not frustrated but challenging enough in the sense that I still had to like try to figure out some of the puzzles a little bit or the platforming because I had to reacquaint myself with platforming. But it was one of the games that I really enjoyed playing while I was doing cardio and gaming, which I've also introduced into my 2024 lifestyle when it comes to these games. Cardio and gaming, you get to do some exercise but also get to do it by doing something fun which means that the hour or so that I'm doing cardio, I also get to dedicate that hour towards gaming and I get to check two things off my list, which makes me super happy as a type A person. So this game was absolutely perfect for cardio and gaming. I did it while I was on the bike and I also did it while on the stepper, which you would think was a bit challenging considering that it's a platformer, but the platforming was not that bad at all. 
and I really enjoyed it while on the step bear because I was like challenging myself. Smushy Come Home is totally worth it. I have it on the Nintendo Switch. I love being able to play it docked, but I loved even more being able to play it handheld and just curled up with the game. I totally recommend it. I give it a 4.5 out of 5 because to me, a game to hit five needs to tick off every single thing on my checklist and this game was so close to it. So that was my small, shorter game of the month. Now the bigger game that I'm working on this month is Eastward. And if you don't know anything about Eastward, it's a game focused in like a dystopian time. You are playing as two characters and you get to interchange between the two, which I find really fun because some of the puzzles require you to use both characters, but both characters also have a storyline that intertwines but it also has little separate moments that make you really appreciate the characters and the story that's being developed. So you're in this dystopian world. You're escaping this one super lockdown type of city with a very corrupt mayor, and then you're making it out into the world and seeing that there is a world outside there, even though there seems to be monsters and this miasma that's consuming the area. You play as both Sam and John, and Sam is this little girl that seems to have been hatched like an alien. And John finds her and takes her under his wing and cares for her and brings her everywhere. It's kind of like a father-like figure to her. She's got this magical power to her and there's this alter spiritual form to her that interacts with her constantly in the game. I have not finished the game, just to say. This is just a recap of what I've been able to encounter so far because the game takes about 30 to 40 hours to complete. And to be honest, this month has been kind of hectic with trying to balance content and a full-time job and gaming. So I'm still about halfway through the game, I wanna say closer to more than halfway through the game. So I'll probably be finishing it up in February. But Sam's character is just so quirky and innocent and she's so hyper and loves to interact with each character in the game. You get to interact with robots, you see all these different monsters, you get to see how she uses her magical powers to interact with some certain puzzles where only she can use her powers to get through it. And then you also get to play as John, who for me, to be completely honest, I consider him like Pedro Pascal in the sense that he's like the daddy of the game. And by daddy, I mean daddy. Um, as much as I don't like using that word, um, he kind of gives me those Pedro Pascal vibes. Like if you were to be watching The Last of Us, the relationship between the two, and then The Last of Us, and I'm just like, yes, I understand. John is such an amazing character. He is a phenomenal chef. He makes these amazing meals for both him and Sam and for the different story plots um, in the game. He's also just going around being a complete badass with a frying pan. <laughs> he goes around and is fighting monsters with a frying pan, which I think is so cool. You end up getting to upgrade it eventually in the game too and you unlock other weapons but his whole character and what makes him unique is that he fights with the frying pan. So I'm a little bit more than halfway through the game and I love it. I love the storyline. I love the conversations between the characters. It's quirky. It's funny. I have caught myself laughing to myself while playing this game because I find it so funny. When you're in these story mode type of scenes in the game, and you've got the quirky interactions between the characters, the music changes, and you can tell when it's gonna be a funny scene because it's like this little bop that just like, you're like, yeah, yeah, this is gonna be a funny comedic time right now. The music is so good. And it, I love the music and how it changes depending on the tone that's being set and the level or placement that you are in the game. So you've got the funny type of music when it's these quirky interactions. You've got the more intense music when it's a boss battle or more serious scenes. The graphics are gorgeous. It's like a combination of pixel and I don't even know what the other style would be, but I love the graphics. I love the colors. I love the, 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 the art behind it. I just loved everything so far about this game. So this game for me right now 
is getting close to that five. Once I finish it, I'll see if it, if it does check off the five. Normally I do need like a farming aesthetic or part in a game to really love it because I am a farming sim girly. The fact that this game has a DLC that's focusing in on farming might make me reach that five because I'm getting quirky characters, super funny and comedic lines and conversations, a really in-depth storyline, eventual farming, and some battling because I'm trying to get a little bit better with the RPG style and the battling because I want to be able to say I'm not just a farm girl, I'm not just an Animal Crossing girl, but that I get to enjoy those like mechanics and I do really enjoy them but I've always found myself feeling super challenged by them. So I love that so much about this game. So those are the two games that I've played this month. Eastward is gonna be trickling into February because I need to finish the game before I get to start the DLC. I'll probably try the DLC in February. That is on the horizon potentially or what I have in mind. If not, the other two games that I'm thinking of playing might be Breath of the Wild because I did start it last year and I really want to finish it before I get myself Tears of the Kingdom. I have put a pause on that until I'm able to finish it. But I also want to start a new save file for Stardew Valley with the 1.6 update coming soon. So if you're interested in seeing me play a new save file of Stardew Valley and other cozy games, consider following me on Twitch. I decided to make a Twitch because I want to try out some streaming. I've done a few streams, mainly co-working streams, just to get myself familiarized with what streaming is about and talk with people, but also be productive while I'm figuring out a schedule that works best for me since I do work a typical nine to five. So I'm looking more towards a morning type schedule, like an eight to 10 in the morning because my job technically starts at 10 and then maybe an evening schedule where it might be around 6 or 7 p.m. until later on in the evening because I want to keep up my routine. But I think having like a structure like this would definitely help me maintain streaming and all the other things that I'm doing. So if you want to give me a check out, please follow me on Twitch. My user will be right here and the link will also be in the description. Thank you again for watching another one of my videos and for being with me on this content creating journey from one bichota to another. Stay cozy and see you next time. Adios.